I know you was taught he was just a prophet. And yeah, some use his name to make a profit. But I gotta tell the world I can't stop it. Christ wasn't just merely a man. End of topic. In the Quran, Surah 2, 136, it says we believed in Allah. Now check this. You believe in what's been revealed from Abraham to Jesus, but the Bible, you say you don't believe it. You think it's corrupt, but it bears record of these men. If that's the case, you might want to read this again. Surah 634, there's a contradiction. It states no one has the power to twist the words of Allah, but the Bible is fiction. Because you say these men spoke the words of Allah, so how could this be if the Bible's a lie? You say we believe in faith and not reason, but you're the one that holds to Muhammad's inconsistent teachings. Surah 3 and 3 reveals the Torah and the Gospel. So this is where it's gonna get a little hostile. The Gospel, the good news, what does this mean to us? Man is born wicked to pray, but God is just. And since we broke all his laws, he must punish. So when it comes to the wicked, you can't run from it. Try going up to a judge pleading to be set free after being charged with rape and murder in the first degree. If he's a good judge, he must sentence you. So if God is a good God, what do you think he's gonna do? You should know Muhammad wasn't even a prophet at all. So why is Islam trying to be justified by laws? I hope you get it. You see God required lambs without spot or blemish. A perfect sacrifice is what it always represented. To be slain for the sins of men. But these animals was innocent. And all this was pointing to the Messiah, the Christ, the perfect lamb who takes away the sins of the world, the true light. Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And you said he's not God? Well, he said you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. Things seen and unseen, he possessed it. Born of a virgin, begotten as a man, but always existed. That's my kapha too. Read John 1, verse 1 through 10. Yeah, the God's son. He created heavens and the earth. That's Colossians chapter 1, the 16th verse. Now flip a page. Look at chapter 2, verse 9. Now how could you not see he is divine? You say that he never claimed to be God. Well, that's odd. Go back to John. Chapter 8 and 58, he surpassed timing. He said before Abraham, ego I am. And long before Muhammad came to the scene, the Apostle Paul say, may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me. An eye to the world. See, the cross is the hinge of history, the focus of time itself, the blessed meeting point where God's wrath and God's mercy can be met in the unique person of Jesus Christ himself. Outside of his cross, his sacrifice, without a mediator, it's hopelessness. And your sins are still level before you. So good luck trying to be justified by your own self-righteousness. Jesus was totally in submission. So he did nothing of himself apart from the Father, right? He said he does whatever the Father does. But the Father gives life. So what kind of man gives life, takes the wrath of his Father, and his humanity dies, three days later rise with a body that's glorified? Only the God-man, the hypostatic union. Why did he pray to his father? Because the son and the father had always been in perfect communion. And one plus one plus one equals one triune God. What do I mean? Each person in the Trinity is fully God, Elohim. One God, three distinct persons, the same in essence. The mystery of the Holy Trinity is truly a blessing. Matthew 28, 9, Christ was worshipped. And he didn't stop him because he's worth it. He told that rich young ruler, only God is good. Then in John 10, 11, he said, I'm the good shepherd, understood? Well, obviously he didn't know who he was talking to. If he did, he probably would have sold all his precious Jews. And yeah, Christ cursed the fig tree because it didn't bear fruit in season. The tree represented national Israel. That's the real reason. The purpose of this is to hope that the blind would see why I love Jesus, because his righteousness was imputed to me. And my sins was imputed to him. So the father poured out his full wrath on God the son on that tree. Now all true believers is justified by the finished work alone of the Prince of Peace.